Thank you so much. Well, listen, without any further delay, I am so privileged to welcome our keynote speaker who's going to be talking on the theme, Enterprise Ready Identity for SaaS Apps. Please join me in warmly welcoming our Chief Product Officer for Workforce Identity Cloud, Arnab Bose. Hi, everyone. I'm super thrilled to be here today with you all on the second day of uh, our Dev Day 23. Uh, as Michael introduced me, uh, I'm um, the Chief Product Officer for Okta's Workforce Identity Cloud. And my session is going to be all about uh, helping uh, enterprise SaaS app builders figure out what does it mean to build applications that are enterprise ready, and what, do we, what are we seeing our Workforce Identity Cloud customers expect from these SaaS applications. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us here in person uh, today uh, at our San Francisco HQ and for all of those who are uh, dialed in, in a, uh, via our live webinar as well. So with that, uh, we have to cover our famous safe harbor slide. Uh, there's going to be a, a couple of forward-looking statements in my presentation. I'm going to talk about some features that are not yet generally available in production. Uh, and all this uh, legally says is uh, please make purchasing decisions on generally available product. So with that, uh, let's first take a step back and, and see what kind of trends are we seeing uh, when we take a look at how our customers are leveraging SaaS applications in, in, in their uh, workplace today. Uh, Okta publishes a Businesses at Work report based off of data we collect, anonymized data we collect uh, across our 17,000 plus customers. And uh, this is available as a free download. There's going to be links and um, the dev day team is going to sort of send this out to you all so you can look at the data in more detail. But uh, as the head of product for Workforce Identity, this report is always super interesting for me because uh, it showcases things like what are the fastest growing app categories in use in the enterprises today? Uh, where are we seeing enterprises invest in terms of uh, choosing more SaaS applications or a diversity of SaaS applications? As well as if there are any business spending shifts. So uh, places where we see a spike in investment uh, after the pandemic or places where people are no longer investing in as, uh, as they look to modernize their businesses. So this is a good place for us to start as we sort of think a bit about what does it mean to build enterprise-ready apps because we should take a look back at the data to see what enterprise apps are being used by our customers today. So if you look at the 2022 data, uh, the standout category, which has seen the maximum amount of growth in the last year, is travel. So apps like TripActions, uh, which is now called Navan, uh, are ones where we're seeing a massive growth in terms of total number of enterprises adopting them, as well as number of users year over year. And this is probably not surprising to you all, because post-pandemic, business travel has opened up. Uh, we're seeing uh, more businesses sort of traveling to meet uh, co-workers who might be remote, as well as customers and partners. Um, in fact, travel from our data is up to even higher than pre-pandemic levels. It's not even going back to pandemic levels. It's, it's, it's even higher than that. Uh, other than travel applications, our uh, standout category last year was uh, design software. So collaborative design software like Figma is a good example. That had seen a lot of uptake. That continues to grow at a massive rate year over year, I think it's to the tune of 36%. Um, and that, that trend is, is continuing on um, uh, in, in our customer base today. So really interesting data uh, for everybody who's a SaaS app builder in the audience today, whether in person uh, or, or live on the webinar. Good for, for all of you all to just take a look at this to get a sense for where are customers investing their budget today uh, in terms of like spending uh, on, on SaaS uh, uh, software applications. The other thing that's really interesting to take a look at is what does diversity of SaaS applications in use look like uh, in market? Uh, we first started tracking this data as part of our Businesses at Work report uh, in 2016. Uh, and compared to the 2016 numbers, we've seen uh, the diversity of applications grow twofold, right? So it started out at about 100 apps in 2016. Now if you look at customers who have 2,000 employees or more, it's gone up to 211 apps on average. So again, like good indication that um, even with the current macroeconomic headwinds, 
uh, customers want to go ahead and buy off-the-shelf software to go solve real business needs. They're seeing value out of that, and the diversity in terms of number of apps being used in the enterprise is only growing year over year. Another interesting thing to sort of double-click on is like different categories. So I talked a little bit about travel apps being a category or design software being a category. Uh, security tool adoption is another place where we're seeing significant increase in spending. So th there was a 23% year-over-year uh, -year increase in terms of number of customers uh, looking at security tool adoption. And there's some really interesting stats in the data as well. It showcases that tools that uh, help customers roll out new security training or uh, help drive up the use of, uh, of better security best practices. These are almost like training and tutorial products. That saw a massive increase in, uh, in spending as well. So um, again, super interesting to take a look at this data to get a sense for, okay, across um, our customer segments, for the various app categories, where are we seeing adoption rise, where are we seeing spend rise uh, in the market? So that's great from the point of view of app builders, like, uh, as an app builder, you're seeing that the diversity of apps uh, being used in the enterprise today is increasing. You can get a sense for like where, where is the spend happening across the different categories. But if you now switch gears and look at this uh, problem statement from the point of view of the economic buyer or the customer rolling it out, um, the customer's life is actually still pretty complicated. It's taking them about 30 days on average to roll out a new application and do it in a way that meets their security and compliance bar, doing it in a way where uh, their end users are able to easily adopt the application. And that's where we believe the opportunity lies. Right? There's definitely a customer need and demand to go deploy SaaS apps, solve real problems, but there's a friction point here today where buying, deploying, rolling out, and driving up adoption of that app is still not as good as it should be. It's still kind of stuck in the 2010s. So just to kind of summarize this chapter of the, uh, of the keynote, we want you to all to take away that SaaS app adoption is rising rapidly. You can, again, look at the data we have across our customers to get a sense for where do we see the adoption, what kind of organizations at what size are adopting, what kinds of applications. Uh, it's clear that buying applications is still the winner uh, in the build versus buy debate. Um, this is awesome, like if you compare this trend to maybe like 15 or 20 years ago, most enterprise apps were homegrown, they were sort of built in-house, they were on-prem, it's, it's changed, to, uh, changed to SaaS, which is awesome for all of us and for the end users and customers as well because they're getting a, um, an always on, always up-to-date service. Um, but there are higher expectations from IT teams who are deploying these applications. Uh, they want to ensure that their security and assurance levels from a, uh, from a sign-in and authentication point of view are met. They want to ensure that their compliance requirements in terms of not creating identity silos are met. They want to ensure that uh, outcomes like automatic access, automatic provisioning is met so that they're not doing repetitive and manual work. And so these are some of the concepts that we'll dive a bit deeper into in the rest of the keynote and then through the rest of the day-to-day. -day, right? The keynote's going to tee up like, what does it really mean to build an enterprise-ready app? Uh, and what does it mean to build an enterprise-ready app from an identity and security perspective? And then our follow-on sessions will cover things like, okay, what does, uh, what does Okta IT do internally in terms of app selection and rollout? And what do we recommend SaaS app developers look at when they're building applications so that they can be adopted by enterprises effectively? So with that, let's, uh, let's take a look at a, a tale of Bhavna and Arnab. So uh, you met Bhavna yesterday. She's our CTO for our uh, customer identity cloud. But in this story, she's going to be uh, an up-and-coming SaaS app developer. Uh, she's got a cool new startup that's, uh, that's building uh, a new application in the design software category, which was like you know, a, a super high growth category last year as well as this year. Um, and probably something that's been in the news for you all with uh, with Adobe's acquisition of Figma that's still kind of going through the regulatory process. Uh, and then I'm gonna play the role, because I'm on the workforce side, I'll, I'll play the role of, uh, of an integrator admin working at a, a global systems integrator. So um, I'm working at a GSI, and that GSI has a contract at Authco. Authco is a fictitious Fortune 500 company with a lot of complexity in their deployment. And what I'm doing is I'm helping them modernize their, their heavily on-prem deployment, uh, figuring out uh, how they can sort of increase their maturity on the zero trust curve, 
helping them adopt modern, uh, modern SaaS applications. So I'm the uh, integrator and implementer, and Bhavna is the, the app developer. And both of us are, are working for or like trying to sell into a customer, uh, which is a Fortune 500 company with hybrid architecture who wants to modernize their security posture. So with that set up, uh, let's take a look at uh, Authco's environment and the issues that Authco face, uh, faces today. And again, like looking at uh, our customer base of uh, customers who would, would have like 2,000 or more employees, this is like very, very common. This is something that uh, I see almost every day in my engagements with these customers. Um, they tend to have complex hybrid identity deployments. They'll have uh, some level of, um, of identities uh, existing in on-prem sources like Active Directory that hasn't changed a whole lot over the years because you still need to maintain your AD instances for things like printers and devices and all sorts of other infrastructure. It's pretty hard to get rid of completely. Uh, or they might actually have uh, HR systems that are sources of record like uh, Workday or SAP success factors. And that's what the standardized HR tool in use uh, looks like at these companies. Um, they have compliance officers and chief security officers who want to uh, stay abreast and remain in compliance as identity standards and security outcomes change. So they're looking at uh, things like uh, the White House uh, mandates on zero trust. They are looking at uh, the NIST guidelines on AL assurance. Again, for some of the developers and folks in the audience, you, you guys might be like, hey, I want to stay focused on building a killer product in my category. I don't want to understand all of these like random acronyms Arnab is throwing at me. And that's perfect because that's, that's the outcome that we want, right? Like we want to ensure that uh, developers and, and builders can stay focused on delivering value. And some of these like complexities that are unique to enterprises are things that can be abstracted away and, and uh, sort of achieved automatically. Um, and then finally, one other like topic that, that I, I see uh, very, very frequently is uh, shrinking or static IT budgets, while the number of employees and number of applications and number of tools is constantly growing. So uh, overworked IT desks uh, and help, uh, help or support desks is very, very common. And so sometimes what happens is even if a, a particular product or a SaaS application is extremely useful, extremely high value for the customer, they may not be able to actually roll it out because of the, of the amount of uh, support it, it's going to take and the, and the support costs involved. So that's something to, like, signif uh, to consider uh, as an app builder as well as as an integrator as you're rolling out a change uh, in, a, in a company. Uh, if you look at Bhavna's challenges as an app developer, Again, so I, I talked about some of these uh, in, in my previous, in the, on the previous slide. Um, you know, she wants to stay focused on building a killer experience that differentiates her design uh, software product from others in market. But she's having to support these diverse personas where there, there's maybe an IT admin or an integrator rolling out her app versus an economic buyer who's choosing to buy the app. Uh, she needs to achieve things like single sign-on and integration with identity providers, she needs to achieve things like uh, higher uh, assurance security outcomes by supporting things like continuous authentication. But she's not an expert in those things, and she wants to achieve these outcomes fast. From the point of view of Arnab as the integrator, you know, I'm helping uh, the customer simplify their hybrid on-prem infrastructure. So I'm looking for options where I can move more workloads to the cloud in a fast, efficient way. Uh, while achieving all of the security outcomes that the customer was used to when they, when they dealt with uh, on-prem or legacy infrastructure. So how do I do that in a way which is consistent, which is repeatable, which is fast, um, and, and make my customer successful? So now that you've got the setup about uh, the, the two sort of personas of the app developer as well as the integrator, both working for Authco, here's, here's our kind of like, uh, way of thinking. There's Enterprise Readiness 101 for these applications, which are things like supporting single sign-on and integrating your application with, with standard identity providers, and then ensuring that your application is available in enterprise app catalogs so that as an integrator or as an IT admin who's like, quote-unquote, installing the app for an enterprise, it's super straightforward. You can go ahead and get it from a catalog and, and hook it up to SSO, and you're good to go. So these are, these are two very basic steps. And then if you look at uh, a slightly more advanced steps, there are things like ensuring that your application supports 
uh, provisioning via standard protocol like SKIM, and then supports uh, advanced security outcomes like single logout. So uh, SKIM will give you things like um, as and when a user joins uh, a company or maybe they move within departments, it'll allow uh, integrators and admins to automatically assign that application uh, to the end user correctly and remove cumbersome manual processes like filing an IT ticket or calling into a help desk to get, get access to an application. So this is where maybe we can dive a bit deeper into like what does Okta provide uh, in, this, in this space to sort of complete that end-to-end -end journey. Uh, Okta's Workforce Identity Cloud focuses on uh, customers who have employees, contractors, and business partners, and these customers need to connect those end-user personas to the right tools and applications. So we provide a platform like the Okta Integration Network, which is an app catalog that SaaS applications can publish into, and we make things like uh, setting up single sign-on in a uh, phishing-resistant, secure manner, super straightforward, uh, setting up things like these joiner, mover, lever, provisioning processes super straightforward with our lifecycle management and workflows products, um, getting to governance outcomes around who has access to what and access requests super straightforward. But these are you know, highly specialized identity and access management use cases, which again, like uh, as an app developer, you shouldn't have to go ahead and solve for yourself. You should have the tooling that available to you off the shelf that allows you to build an app that automatically plugs into all of these outcomes. And this is where Okta's Customer Identity Cloud comes in. Uh, and yesterday's sessions were probably focused a lot more on the first bucket here, around consumer apps and digital experiences. But Customer Identity Cloud is also focused on uh, delivering amazing tooling for developers to build SaaS apps. So they already provide tooling today where you can build a SaaS app that plugs into uh, SSO via SAML or OIDC correctly, that supports things like pass keys correctly, and then there's a few more things coming in the future. So th this is a good place to kind of like go into the actual end-to-end -end journey. And this is kind of like the, the meat of, uh, of my presentation, right? Like I'm, I'm setting up what the enterprise readiness journey looks like across um, developers as well as integrators, and where as a developer you should focus on customer identity cloud, and where as an integrator you can sort of leverage the tools within workforce identity cloud to effectively roll out apps faster and in a more secure manner. Um, so the, the first step is, uh, you know, we have Auth0 for startups. This means that as a startup, if you have 25 or fewer employees, uh, you can get Customer Identity Cloud for free and start building today. If you build your identity and authentication stack on Customer Identity Cloud, there is already uh, SDKs and tools available to ensure that your app can support uh, single sign-on via OIDC and SAML. And if you support one of those protocols, you're, you're effectively automatically plugged into the rest of the Workforce Identity Cloud uh, outcomes around passwordless and phishing resistance and so on and so forth. But uh, the CIC team, or the Customer Identity Cloud team, is not stopping just there. They're, they're also going into some of the 201 level outcomes. So uh, one of the things that they're working on this year that should be out by the, by the end of this calendar year is support for single logout. Uh, what this means is you've got single sign-on, but let's say uh, there's a security uh, uh, change, right? Like uh, you, the enterprise has some sort of endpoint protection tool on all of their company issued laptops, and um, Arnab's laptop has, a, has malware on it. When some of these things happen, um, customers want um, those, those end users to be automatically logged out from every application and not rely on the session lifetime within that particular app. So this is a, a security use case that we've seen come up more and more often in enterprises. And if the application supports single logout or universal logout, it makes it super easy for, uh, for a customer to go and configure workflows or other policies to go ahead and terminate that session. The second thing that the CIC team is working on is uh, skim protocol-based provisioning. So again, like there, there'll be SDKs available later on this year where if you build your SaaS application using the Okta Customer Identity Cloud stack, uh, you will be able to support provisioning, and it'll mean that uh, when your application is installed or used by a customer who's also using Workforce Identity Cloud or, or actually any other uh, IDP in this case that supports Skim, the, the customer or the integrator can go ahead and write uh, automatic join or move reliever processes to be able to, to to be able to sort of reduce any manual tasks required 
to assign applications uh, to the right people. So the, the gold standard here is, uh, as an enterprise application, uh, as, as Authco, the way Arnab, the GSI, would set up their environment would be connecting Authco's identity provider to an HR system of record, like Workday or Success Factors. It'll mean that whenever a new employee joins, that employee will automatically um, get an account created in the, in the identity provider. And then based on attributes like what department they're joining or what level or role they're joining, you would have automated processes that assign the right applications to them on day zero. So on day zero, when, uh, when, that, em when that employee boots up their, their laptop and, and goes to the Okta dashboard, they'll start seeing your enterprise SaaS app if it's uh, supporting provisioning correctly. Uh, after you've done those two steps, the next step is obviously publishing your SaaS app to the Okta integration network. And from that point, uh, point in time onwards, you're kind of off to the journey of the integrator or the IT admin. The integrator gets to go ahead and uh, install the app off of the OIN, and then they can go ahead and build out policies that are advanced, like, okay, what are all of these lifecycle automation use cases you want to deploy? Uh, what are some of the rules you want to use to go ahead and build out continuous authentication and trigger single logout based on risk changes? And, and those are all kind of available today via our Workforce Identity Cloud product with our LCM and workflow solution. And workflows, again, like we already have workflows templates that do things like um, uh, help you do single sign out or single logout against Office 365, Google Workspace, Zoom, and a bunch of other apps. So the, the macro takeaway here is, as an app builder, what do you, you want to drive faster adoption by plugging into these standard processes, and you want to increase your serviceable market, right? Like if you're trying to sell into an enterprise that's security conscious, that's compliance conscious, they're going to want things like standard SSO support, standard skim support, and uh, the CIC product helps you sort of build that natively into your application. So uh, that was a, a, a lot of content, but uh, hopefully the journey made sense to you all. Um, and what we want to do is uh, ensure that everybody who is an app developer or a builder is well set up for this journey. Um, so what we are doing right now is, uh, you know, we've had the Odd Zero for Startups program available for a while. We, we are doing a special uh, promotion for everybody who's joined us here for Okta Dev Day, whether in person or online, to ensure that not only do, can you get um, Auth0 for startups, but you can also get uh, Okta's Workforce Identity Cloud solution as well. So if you sign up via this QR code, um, we'll, we'll, uh, you'll get a, a, a registration and sign up page, which will allow you to, to sign up not only for Auth0 or CIC to build your application's identity stack, but it'll also allow you to use Workforce Identity Cloud for your own internal employees as well, and it'll help you sort of test out that entire end-to-end -end journey of what does it mean to go ahead and build your app uh, using Okta's Customer Identity Cloud, go ahead and build some of the, the advanced capabilities like skim provisioning or single logout as they become available later this year, and then actually publish that app to the Okta integration network and use it yourself. You can use your own app yourself and see, okay, does this actually deliver differentiated outcomes in terms of easy provisioning, join or move or lever use cases? Does it actually deliver on the outcomes of continuous authentication? And you can see all of that uh, live in action. And hopefully that'll help you go ahead and build the business case for hey, why is your app differentiated from others in your category when it, when it comes to uh, being enterprise ready. Okay. So that's, that's the big call to action, sign up today. Um, and with that, I'm going to pause and, and end my keynote. Uh, that was the big message I had, which is uh, build enterprise-ready apps. Um, customers want more SaaS apps in their, in their environment. There's a lot of diversity, and there's a, there's a lot of growth in terms of utilization. And then if you look at tooling, you've, you've got amazing tools with Customer Identity Cloud to go ahead and build your application, and you've got amazing tools with Workforce Identity Cloud to go ahead and leverage those differentiated enterprise-ready features. All right. Uh, thank you so much for the time.